in that name that's above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you here today in the Northside Baptist Church. We welcome everyone. We appreciate the visitors that's visiting with us today. Always glad to have you to visit with us here at Northside. Now, to you listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking, and we're hoping during the next hour we can be an inspiration to you. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate you calling someone and now having them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming live right from the uh, auditorium here at Northside. I want you to take your Bibles today and turn to Matthew chapter 6. While you're turning there, I want to say just a word to the radio listening audience. If you're not getting our daily broadcast on the station while you're now listening, you tune in each day at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, and get the broadcast. If there's some of you kind of on the borderline pertaining to our proposed Holy Land tour for March of next year, I wish you'd give it some real serious consideration. It's one of the greatest tours we've set up thus far because we're planning to go to Masada. Masada is the place where the Jews held out after 70 AD. Great number committed suicide rather than be captured. We go into Petra. Now, Petra is the beautiful rock rose city where the Jews will be driven during the tribulation period by the Antichrist. And you go into this rock rose city, it's the color of a beautiful rose. You have to go in on horseback, and there's a city on the inside of a rock. It's very, very beautiful. And just that one trip to Petra would be worth the entire trip. And uh, we're going, of course, to Athens, Greece. We're going to take a ride on the Sea of Galilee. We're going to the tomb of Jesus, the Mount Calvary where he was crucified. We'll see the tomb of King David. We'll go to the tomb of Lazarus. We'll go to the upper room while Jesus met with his disciples for the Last Supper and while the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and many other places. We'll go to Bethlehem and visit the cave where Jesus was born. And I'll tell you, it's a trip of a lifetime. If you have reached your time and age and you've never taken a trip, you ought to try this one. You'll never forget it. You'll always be glad that you did. And if you're right in, I'll send you a brochure or either you call me uh, get in touch with me. Now is the time to make plans for the trip. And after you have gone, come back. You wouldn't take any amount of money for having gone, even if you had to borrow the money to go on. You may say, Preach Edwards, how about the trouble over there in Lebanon? Well, if you wait till all the trouble ceases over there, you'll never go. Trouble's been going on over there since Abraham and Isaac, or rather Isaac and Ishmael got in the quarrel of fuss at Abraham's tent. And they started it there between the Arabs and the Jews. It's been going on ever since and will continue to go on until Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom. So there'll be trouble there. Not only that, we don't go into those areas anyway. Our agency will not carry us into those areas where there's trouble. And it's a wonderful 10-day trip. I can't say too much about it because I know the real value of it. Anyone that'll go, I've been there 10 times. I'm looking forward to going back again. And every time I go... I always see something new and refreshing that blesses my heart. So if you're interested, you write to me or call me. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603, is a zip code number. Let me hear from you next week. This is a faith ministry. I depend upon you that love God to help me keep this program on the air. We've been on in our 36th year daily. And we stayed on by the friends of Christ that love God that keep us on. So you pray for me and write to me. I'm going to bring a message today I brought before. I make no apology for it. Many people want this message on cassette tape and it will be on cassette tape. I'm going to speak on the subject, Behold the Fowls of the Air. I'm going to bring my bird message today. I've had a lot of people say, Preach Edwards, I'd like for you to put that bird message on tape. I'd like to have it. Well, it will be available. It'll be on tape number 91. I'll just write in and say, Preach Edward, send me the tape on the birds. I'll most certainly get it in the mail to you in appreciation for a gift of $5 or more. Help pay for expense, help pay for radio time. 
And if you want this message on the birds, it will be available. So you write to me next week, and we'll get the tape out to you, and you pray for us. Matthew chapter 6, and beginning with verse 25. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Notice that phrase where it says, Behold the fowls of the air. Now when Jesus preached while he was on the earth, he would use birds and animals and fish and flowers and seed and various things there around him as he preached and used them to illustrate his teaching or his preaching. Nothing wrong in that. And I'm going to use the birds of the air, the fowls of the air today to illustrate my message. And I want you to listen closely and see what kind of bird you are. And you should be able to find out before by the time I finish my message today. There are over 40 species of birds recognized in the Bible. A bird's nest is referred to 20 times in the Bible. So the Bible has much to say about birds and about a bird's nest. There was an old woodpecker one time that decided he would just leave his part of the country and go west. And he flew for many, many miles and lit up on a big tree. And he thought he would try his bill and peck away and see how it felt to be away from his own country, his own kin, of course. And so he ran back and coming down with his bill to hit that tree. And about that time, lightning struck the tree and split it right down the middle. He shook his head. He said, you know, a bird just doesn't know how much power he does have until he gets away from home. And sometimes that's true. The Bible says the prophet's not without honor, save in his own country and among his own kinsmen. And so we'll talk about these birds today. And bird number one is the old crow. I hear them every day around here. We have some pecan trees and they love pecans. And they pay us a visit. They get out here in these pines and they, they uh, make their noise, however they, whatever you want to call it. And they're kind of an old grumbling type bird. You want to quarrel, same like. And we hear quite a bit of them this day and time. They like to get in your corn field and pull up your, the little corn while it's young. And the old crow is kind of a grumbling type bird. And you know, we have some kind of, we have church members today that are like the old crow, always grumbling and complaining about things. Never satisfied. They'd grumble about the kind of coughing they were buried in. You just can't please them, some of them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, were destroyed. Now God doesn't like murmuring and grumbling and growling and fussing among his people. In fact, God buried a gang of them in the Old Testament for that. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14, Do all things without murmuring and disputing. It's a sin, it's wrong for church members to grumble and growl and gripe about everything that comes along. You should be happy in the Lord, satisfied in God that you know Him and God is taking care of you. You have food to eat, water to drink, clothes to wear, shelter in which you live. Most of you have transportation and yet people grumble and grumble and growl about things and Christians should not be guilty of that. That's wrong. You ought to be happy and praising God and shouting the victory and not be like the old crow all time complaining, all time grumbling and growling about something that's taking place in your home, on your job, in your church, or wherever you may be. And then we come to bird number two, and that's the little sparrow. Now you see many little sparrows today. They're the little no harm bird. You say, well, that little bird is a no harm bird. It doesn't really harm anything. And you have a lot of no harm church members today. They don't see any harm in anything. They think everything goes, doesn't matter. If they want to smoke and drink and dance and go to filthy movies and look at filthy programs on TV and get out and, and walk around uh, partly undressed before the opposite sex, they don't think anything about it. They say it's all right. Everybody's doing it. They're the little no harm bird, no harm in anything. That used to be a day whenever there's a lot of harm in these things, but people today don't seem to think so. I just happened to turn in the PTL club, pass the loot club here 
The other day, I don't look at that junk on that with the 700 Club either. But anyway, I happened to see this woman whose husband's in charge of this thing look like Jezebel. Now, she belongs to the holiness outfit. I can remember so worldly until it's repulsive. No spirit of God about it. I don't waste my time looking at those programs on, on the PTL or the 700 Club. If you want to waste your time, all right. Occasionally, I might get a pretty good person on there, but who wants to go to a garbage can to get a banana when you go straight to the store? On the 700 Club the other night, they had a fellow on there. I just happened to tune in here. I don't usually look at it. He weighed about 200 pounds more than he should, and he was talking about how he was a member of the KKK for about 10 years, and then he lined up with God, and he told about how he talked to God personally. I mean in person, talked to him personally. He told about how some angels paid him a visit. He said the angels got in a fight over him. Now, you can conceive of that. The angels got in a fight over him. Really did, he said. And, and then he went into a certain church and had all the junk he brought from the KKK, carried it down to the altar, and then the preacher came down and spoke to him, and, and the Holy Ghost slayed them both. They all just passed out in the audience. And then they got up speaking in tongues. That old gray-headed fellow that's usually on the program there, a uh, holiday man, and everybody began to applaud that poor old stupid fellow, you know, like they thought that really happened. That's a lie of the devil. The angels didn't come and fight over him. He did not see Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost did not strike him down, and he did not speak in biblical tongues. Yet that deceived crowd, gullible crowd that followed that type of stuff, all began to applaud him and say, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And they don't know any more about spiritual things. The cow knows when Sunday comes. That's pathetic. No harm in anything anymore. Now, I know some of you in the radio listeners don't like it, but you can leap it, lump it, or whatever you want to do. It's the truth anyhow, whether you be here in the auditorium or out there in the radio listeners. I'm telling you the truth. Now, in these last days, people are deceived by such junk as that. They have beautiful scenery, beautiful backdrops, and they have uh, beautiful people to come in, but it's very deceptive. The Holy Ghost of God is not in that type of stuff. To have people speaking in tongues that's not even saved. All kind of different denominations. They have Protestants, Catholics, Lutherans, Baptists, um, Holiness, and all of that crowd all come in and join up and all try to speak in tongues. And God's not in a million miles of that type of stuff. That's the ecumenical movement today that the devil is using to build the one world church. And you better be aware of it. Now there's people say there's no harm in anything anymore. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, 18, Come out among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Do you belong to some of these old apostate institutions that, that support modernism and liberalism and belong to the, the um, world cast of churches, um, the national cast of churches? You better find out what you're doing, what you're supporting. You'll face God in the judgment. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Dear beloved, let's cleanse ourselves from all fields of the flesh and spirit, perfecting the holiness and the fear of God. We find today there's still some harm in some things and there's some things that Christians should not do. More women today are dying with lung cancer because of smoking than dying with breast cancer. A breast cancer. Years ago, breast cancer was the cancer that carried most women out of this world. Today it's lung cancer all because of smoking and drinking. And you need to realize that. I visited a lady in the hospital the other day, and she was sucking one cigarette after another. She said she was an alcoholic. Of course, she was a drunkard, of course. They call them alcoholics. I said, are you saved? She said, yes, I'm saved, but I'm an alcoholic, and I suck one cigarette after another. I thought, my God, I wonder who deceived you. Saved people don't do things like that. Now, the devil may have you deceived and destroying yourself. If you're a born-again Christian, you won't be in this world long. You'll destroy that temple. God said if you defile that temple, him you'll destroy and you won't be here very long. But as a general rule, saved people uh, try to straighten up and, and they don't want to destroy the temple of the Holy Ghost if they know anything about the Word of God. The next bird I want to mention is the hummingbird. Now sometimes I see a little hummingbird right out here on our patio. We have some flowers out there. And that little bird will come easing in. you light on a flower to try to find the insects there. And, and then he'll scoot backwards and then zoom. He goes back the other way. Zip, he's gone the other way. You can't tell whether that bird's coming or going. Now you have a lot of church members like that today. 
You can't tell where they're coming or going. They may be here on Sunday and they may not. They may stick with you and they may not. You don't know where they are. You know what a lot of them please. You have a lot of them today. You can't count on them. You can't build churches on them. You have people today they can uh, run a little temperature or take a little cold on and they'll use that as an excuse to stay out of the house of God. But you watch them on Monday. They'll go to that job. They don't get too sick for that. They just get too sick for God, not too sick to go on their job. And that's pathetic. Little hummingbirds, you can't tell where they're coming or going. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty of Christ has made us free. You need to believe what you believe and know what you believe and stay put and stand on the truth of God. Let's move on to the next bird, and that's the old woodpecker. Now the old woodpecker is the knocker. He likes to knock everything that comes along. In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13, For you need to go in yourselves, neither yourself you them that are in you to go in. Now the old Pharisees, they would not get right with God. They were the old woodpeckers, and they would try to knock anyone else out that wanted to follow the Lord. Now you have church members like that today. They're not going to get right with God, and they're going to hinder everybody else that wants to serve God. They're against everything you try to do for God. Kind of like the old deacon sitting over there half asleep and, and the preacher said something about voting on something or another and, and they all stood up and he didn't know what it was all about and he said, now pastor, I don't know what you're voting for, but whatever it is, I ain't for it. And you have a lot of them like that. They're against everything you try to do. Kind of like the old deacon, the pastor said to his church, he said, all right, do we have anybody here that really wants to go to hell? If anybody in this building wants to go to hell, I want you to stand up. This old deacon stood up. He's about half asleep. He kind of looked around. He said, Pastor, I don't know what you're voting for, but said that nobody fought but me and you. We're the only ones standing. So it pay people some time to keep their ears, their eyes open, and kind of find out what's going on. And so the old woodpecker likes to knock everything that comes on. And then you have the, the old peacock. Now that old peacock church member likes to show off. They like to fly it around. They like to be seen. You know, a lot of people just go uh, to church to be seen and to see. They don't go for the good of it. They go to see how people dress. Kind of like the old woman in church one Sunday on the way back home. She said to her husband, said, did you see uh, uh, Sister Jones's dress? He said, no, I didn't go looking for Sister Jones's dress. Well, did you see uh, Sister Smith's hat? No, I, I, I didn't go to look for Sister Smith's hat. His wife said, what in the name of heaven do you go to church for? Well, a lot of people, that's all they go for, just to see and be seen. And I'll tell you, it's a sad situation when you find some good sister walking in or maybe on Easter Sunday morning and have a $50 hat on a, a $10 head kind of looks bad. There's something there that doesn't fit quite so well. But you have a lot of people, unless they can dress up above others, unless they can fly around and show off their clothes, then they won't go. A lot of people on Easter won't go to church on Easter because they don't have a new Easter outfit. Isn't that sad? You're not supposed to go to the house of God to show off your clothes. Well, what you got, keep them clean. Be sure you have enough to cover your body up. Keep your clothes clean, dress like a decent person should. If it's nothing but a pair of overalls, come on to the house of God. You don't have to have a $500 suit of clothes to come to the house of God or a $100 dress. Just put on the best you got, clean up, and come to the house of God. That's the way God wants you. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 3 and 4, Who's adorning? Let it not be that our adorning of the plaiting of the hair, the wearing of gold, or putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Come because your heart's there. Not because you're dressed to be seen, but come because your heart. It's in the house of God. Then we move to the next bird, and I must hurry along because I got a, a cup full of them here. I want to get out to let, let out the cup uh, this morning because I want you to find out what kind of bird you are. The next bird I want to mention is the old sap sucker. Now, the sap sucker will lie on a tree and he won't put anything in the tree. He wants to take everything out. He takes out of the tree, takes the sap out of the tree, and then when he takes the sap out of the tree, then of course that's all he wants. And so the old sapsucker is a bird that takes out and never puts in. Now you'd be surprised at the sapsucker church members you have in the church. They come to the house of God. They never put a dime in the collection plate. Never do anything to make the church go forward. Never put forth any special effort to invite anybody else. 
They just are like a bunch of sap suckers who want to take out all the time and never put anything in. I never have been like that myself. I want to always do my part in doing what I can for the glory of God. But you have some dislike that. They just want to take out. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, 15, I'm very glad to spend and be spent for you. Paul said, I'm willing to be used and spent to the glory of God and give everything I have in the cause of God to help others. Then we come to the next bird, and that's the mocking bird. Now, an old mocking bird can mock about any bird he desires. Several years ago, I was lying in bed early one morning. I heard a bird in a little tree nearby, and I, he would uh, whistle um, uh, one tune one moment, and the next moment he'd change over and sound like another bird, and then he'd sound like another bird, and, and uh, he'd sound like several different birds. Come to find out there's an old mocking bird out there mocking all the other birds. Now you have a lot of mocking bird church members today. They want to mock everybody, join in on every kind of religion, and uh, look at everything that comes on PTL or 700 clubs, swat it up, and so gullible, eat everything that they talk about there. And then they want to go along with all different denominations and different groups, regardless of what, what they believe, and just be with the crowd. They can say, good God on Sunday and good devil on Monday. They can sing, oh, how I love Jesus on Sunday and pistol packing mama on Monday. Beloved, they just with the crowd they're with. They can praise God on Sunday and start cursing with that crowd to work with on Monday or Tuesday. That's a mocking, but just with the crowd, wherever they are, with that crowd. They can come to church and praise God on Sunday. Go out here with this um, sports crowd in the, the arena and they yell and hoop and holler and, and uh, throw their head uh, across the crowd and and uh, act just like the rest of the crowd, you know. They may not be too much wrong about rejoicing and getting excited about a team winning, but why sit back and, and be uh, dried up and never show any signs of joy in the house of God? If you can go and, and see the people out there uh, participating in sports and they get a touchdown, if you can hoop and holler about that, why don't you show some good spirit in the house of God and say, praise God once in a while. Hallelujah, watch. Amen, watch. What? Enjoy the blessings of God. Should we do that? Sure, we should do that. And so you have the mocking bird, whatever the crowd they're with, then they are out there acting like that crowd. Kind of like the old pirate, you know. He, he went to the moving picture show one Saturday night with his master, and he looked at the old moving picture show, and he looked over that crowd and singled out all the people there. And, and then on Sunday morning, his master carried him to church. Just a mere key roster, carried the old parrot to church and went out and sat down the other front. And the old parrot turned his head and started looking over that crowd. And he said, same old crowd, same old crowd. That's the crowd that saw the picture show the night before. Same old crowd, that's them. And you have people like that today. Same old crowd, go to the dirty, filthy moving picture show, and then go to the house of God on Sunday and talk about loving God. There are some things that saved people should not do. And then we come to the next bird, and that's the old buzzard. That old buzzard loves deadness and things that stinks. Now, you can let a church die, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, and you have some buzzard church members. They like that. They're not going to have any life. They're not going to have any joy. They're not going to come in and, and try to encourage or strengthen and add a little life. To the they like it dead. They want it real dead and dead long enough until it stinks. And you have church members like deadness. Why, you can get a stink started in the church. If they hadn't been in six months, they'll be there the next Sunday. They're buzzing church members. You can kind of let it get out. We're going to vote on the pastor next Sunday and see if we can't run him off and get a new one. I'll guarantee you every buzzard that's got his name on your church roll to be there the next Sunday because they figure there might be a stink and he wants to get in on it. And so the buzzing church members love stinks. You get a fuss start, a split start in the church. These old buzzing church members will come in and they want to do a little voting. They say, well, we're members here. We haven't been in about six months, but a year or maybe two or three years. But we'll be there. If you got a stink started, we'll be around. We like to get in on a stink. I mind the man that lived up in Tennessee. His name was Buzzard and, uh, and he has some beautiful, lovely daughters. And they just didn't like that name, Buzzard. They, they, they would like to change it. So he was transferred down into Louisiana, and he decided it would be a good time to change his name. So he changed his name from Buzzard to Bazaar. And he was Mr. Bazaar, doing well. And then he's doing well until 
a fellow that knew him very well, was also transferred down in Louisiana. And he came to the office and the manager said, uh, I understand uh, there's a fellow here from your hometown. I just wonder if you know each other. And he said, I want you to, uh, do you know, really know Mr. Bazard here? He said, yes, sir. Said he's the same old buzz that I knew back up there in Tennessee years ago. Now, beloved, we are what we are, where we are. We might kind of change our names around, but we are what we are. Little colored boy said, I is what I is. I ain't no iser. And that's exactly where we are today. We are what we are. And so there's the buzzard church member. They like dead things, you know. They like for the church to be dead. They like for stinks to come up in the church. And they enjoy that. Then we move to the next one. That's the old Hulk church member. Now he's a dominant bird. He wants to run the church. He says, I'll run it or run it. If I can't drive, then I won't ride. If I can't be the quarterback, I won't play on the team. If I can't be the pitcher, you can take my love, I'm going home. You have church members like that today because maybe they have a little wealth, or they donated a little more than somebody else, or bought a pew, or bought the carpet, or gave some lumber. They think, well, I got to run that church. You'd be surprised at the church over this country that's dominated by these diopterfies and think because they did thus and thus that they ought to be the ramrod of the church. But that's not so. Every man and woman in the church should be equal and they are in the, should be in the church and in sight of God. That's the old Dominion bird. Then you have the old owl, the old hoot owl. He's a bird that lies away at night and can't sleep. You got church members like that. Go to bed at night, they can't sleep. It says in Job chapter 30 and verse 20, I'm a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Sometimes I wonder if I'm not an old owl church member. Sometimes I go to bed at night and can't go to sleep. I'm like the old arrow. Well, the reason you can't go to sleep, there's something on your mind, or you eat too much, or something went wrong, because if you were normal, and not something worrying you and disturbing you, you ought to be able to go to sleep when you go to bed at night, unless you're sick. Now, we can be our church members, and sometimes you have them like that. And then you have the old ostrich, and, and that's the one that forsakes her children. If you read Lamentations chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, Job chapter 39, verse 14 through 16, you'll find this bird forsakes her children. Any mother that don't love a little children, that forsake her children or give them away, there's something wrong with that mother. I don't care who she is. She's not a real mother. She's not the kind of woman that she ought to be. And then you have the great speckled bird. The great speckled bird in the Bible is a bird that fought other birds and tried to tear down and destroy other birds. That's why she was sprinkled with blood. Her blood came from the other birds, fighting other birds. Now you have a lot of church members today. If they can tear you down, they think they build themselves up. I've had people try to tear me down. to try to build themselves. I've had preachers to do that. I've had preachers get behind my back and, and try to tear me down in the eyes of other preachers and other churches thinking they were building themselves up. That's a stupid thing. You tear yourself down when you do a thing like you don't build yourself up by tearing down other Christians or other men of God, the true men of God. You tear yourself down when you're trying to do that. And that's a great speck of bird. Remember, if you want to build yourself up, then push others up. Push others up, and that way you build yourself up. Then we have the little dove, and I love the little dove. And I'll move along hurriedly because I want to get another bird or two in. And the little dove is a clean, harmless bird. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as dove. You won't find any more beautiful birds anywhere than the little dove. A dove was used for sacrifice in the Bible. A dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. A dove is a symbol of peace. A dove is a home-loving bird. A dove is a clean bird. A dove is a harmless bird. And a dove is true to its mate. They tell me if a dove's mate get killed or die, that they don't take up with another mate. They just go alone until they die. That dove is a beautiful, beautiful bird. That's the kind of bird we all should be like the beautiful little dove. The dove is a beautiful, clean bird, symbol of the Holy Spirit. And then you have the eagle. Now, I'm not going to say too much about this eagle because that's a sermon within itself. The eagle and her young. I have a message or two I preach on the eagle. And it takes about an hour almost to preach that sermon on the eagle. The wonderful, wonderful thought about that old eagle. As you move through the Bible, God 
called Israel, said, uh, said Israel was carried away on eagles' wings. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 11 and 12, As an eagle stirreth up on this, floodeth over a young, spreadeth broad her wings, taketh them, bareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him. Talking about Israel. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 4, I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself from the land of Egypt. That eagle is a great bird in the Bible and a full sermon within itself. And I won't try to take time to try to talk about the eagle today because that would take at least 30 more minutes. But you know we have uh, all kind of birds today. Now when some churches want a new pastor, this is what they want. They want a new pastor with the strength of an eagle, the gentleness of a dove, the grace of a swan, the eye of a hawk, the friendliness of a sparrow, the night hours of an arrow, the industry of a woodpecker, the attractiveness of a peacock, the tough skin of a gander, and when they get that kind of bird, they want him to live on the food of a canary. And how true that is today among many, many churches. They want the best bird they can get, but they just want to take a little canary food and feed him on that and let him get along on that. A wise old owl said in oak, the more he heard, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we be like that wise old bird? Today I've let several birds out of the cup. They're flown all around us. And don't you leave here with your tail feathers plucked out and say you didn't get hit. Because if you listen to this message, everybody's got some feathers knocked out here this morning. And you need to find out what bird you are and where you stand and try to be as much like the little dove as you possibly can to the glory of God. This message is on cassette tape. For the benefit of you in the radio listening audience, you might write in and get it. My mail address is Virgil Edwards, Post Office Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603. I've dealt with all these birds except the eagle. It'd take 30 minutes to deal with the eagle, and I won't have time to do that today. Thank you. You've listened well. Everybody stand to your feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll take the message and use it. Help us to find out where we stand. Help us see what kind of bird we are. And use this message to stir our hearts. And help us be more like the little dove. A clean bird, a pure bird. A, a bird that, that uh, loves its mate. A bird that that's, uh, uh, sacrifices. A bird, our Father, a type of the Holy Spirit. Help us to be that kind of bird today. Use this to thy glory. Speak to this audience. Have your way in Jesus. Love the name I pray. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us. Is someone in this building unsaved? Or you want to join the church and come back to God? You may respond while she plays a couple of stanzas. How about it? 